Hey there everybody, welcome to Auto Bears and this is the new Sangyong Musso pickup truck. Now in the last couple of years, the number of manufacturers actually producing pickups for the UK market has actually declined a little bit. We've lost established brands such as Mitsubishi and Nissan with the L200 and Navara. So if you're after a conventional pickup truck, you're actually down to around five manufacturers. You've got Volkswagen, Ford, Toyota, Isuzu, and Sangyong with this Musso. And I've got this Sangyong Musso for a week and I'm gonna let you know, well, if it's any good in this highly competitive pickup segment. Now, when it comes to the Musso styling, just like the Rexton I tested earlier this year, the Musso has had a bit of a midlife facelift and it's all for the better. It definitely looks much more striking and actually very utilitarian at the same time. It definitely means business. Now on this Saracen trim, we do have some blacked out body panels to give it a bit more of a sporty look, particularly with the ladder grille, wing mirrors and door handles, tinted windows, as well as the 18 inch alloy wheels as well. But let me know what you think of the Musso's looks in the comments section below, but I definitely think it has a very purposeful utilitarian look to it. And actually, yeah, I think in this very competitive segment, it should stand out. Now, I think that's enough of looking at the outside of this new Musso. Let's see what they've done with the interior. Sat in the front of the Musso, you are greeted by a very spacious, very comfortable and surprisingly well-equipped cabin. Now, of course, this being a pickup truck, you have to climb up into the driver's seat. So you do have a grab handle here on the A pillar, which is very handy. And then once you sat in the seats themselves, you find that they are very comfortable and there's plenty of adjustment. And on this Saracen trim, they are electrically adjustable up front. And I even have lumbar support. Now, the one thing I will mention is I did have a taller passenger who's quite long in the leg, the lucky bugger. And he was telling me that there was actually a little bit less support underneath than he was expecting. So just be aware of that. Of course, with my short stubby legs, I've had no issues whatsoever. I will also mention that the seats up front are Nappa leather as well, so they do feel of a very good quality. Also with the steering, I do also have, if I can find the handle, there it is, both rake and reach adjustments. So getting the perfect driving position is easy. Interior quality is actually pretty good in here as well. We got soft touch plastics here on top of the dash and on top of the dials, but it is a little bit hard up here, but we have got a tray which is lined with rubber. So that is nice. It is hard scratchy plastic on top of the doors, but we have got a bit of leather trim here on the door handle and on top of the armrest. Then around the rest of the cabin, we have got this carbon fiber effect trim and actually a bit of Nappa leather here on the dash as well. So I do really like that. And then lower down, of course, yes, this being a pickup, it is hard scratchy plastic again, but it does feel of a decent quality and should stand the test of time. Now we have got a couple of new arrivals coming from Volkswagen and Ford with the Amarok and uh, the Ranger. And I wouldn't be surprised if they have better quality interiors than the Sangyong. But then again, they have got an element of lifestyle about those pickups, whereas the Sangyong does feel very much like a workhorse, which is no bad thing. Cubby spaces in the Musso are actually really good. We've got some very decent sized door pockets where you can get a large bottle of drink in there, but they're not lined with any fabric, so loose items will rattle around a bit. Then on the center console up front, we have got a little tray area, which is kind of hard plastic slash rubber lined. You can't put your phone flush in there, but it can rest up whilst it's charging. We've got two USB charging sockets as well, as well as a 12 volt socket, and also a cigarette lighter as well. It's been a long time since I've seen one of those in a car, but you can of course use that as well as an additional 12 volt socket. Then behind the four wheel drive select, we've got a couple of cup holders, which are of a decent size with a couple of plastic grippers and it is rubber lined. So you can get a can of drink in there and it's not gonna rattle around anywhere. However, if you go for an energy drink, then yes, it might do so. Then underneath the armrest, We've actually got a very decent amount of additional space as well, and it has got a little bit of fabric on the bottom, so loose items, items shouldn't make too much noise, but that is really handy. I also like as well the height of which the arm rest sits, so I can rest my arm on there on a long journey. And then finally, we've got the glove box, which is lockable. 
and you've got a decent amount of space in there but as you can see it is taken up with the book pack and the locking wheel nuts of course you can move those elsewhere if you wish but it isn't lined with any fabric so again loose items will rattle around a bit but it's a decent amount of space in there as well but just be aware as i said the book pack and the locking wheel nuts do take up a bit of space in there and that's pretty much it when it comes to cubby spaces up front in the Musso. It's actually pretty decent. And as I mentioned earlier, we have got a little tray area on top of the dashboard there. But there's no cover, cover? covered on there, so I should say. So that way, if you are going to put your wallet or something valuable there, it is on show for everyone to see. Now, there are quite a few buttons here in the Musso's cabin, but they are very nicely laid out. So just underneath the 9.2 inch infotainment screen, we have got a number of shortcut buttons and a little rotary knob. Just below there, we've got your dual zone climate control. And just below there as well, we got your heated and ventilated front seat control. And they are nicely laid out and very easy to use when you're on the move. Then we have got your drive mode select here next to the gear lever, as well as your four wheel drive high and low gear selects little rotary knob there just behind the gear lever. Then on the right hand side we have got your hill descent control and traction control buttons and on the steering wheel on the left hand side we've got your media and communication controls as well as the heated steering wheel button and on the right hand side we've got your cruise control and driver data controls so you can go through the various menus whilst you're on the move and that is one thing I do like about the layout of the buttons here on the Musso is that it is actually very easy to operate when you're on the move and driving. So I do like that feature. Now, as I mentioned, there is a 9.2 inch touchscreen display. You have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and it's actually a nice system to use. It is fairly responsive. You have TomTom, for your sat nav on the Saracen and Rhino trims, and it is a pretty decent system. It does give you speed alerts and lets you know if there are any speed cameras coming up on your journey. And yeah, it's, I've got no complaints whatsoever in regards to the actual system itself, but there is one complaint I'll tell you about a little bit later on, and it does involve the infotainment screen. Now, in front of the steering wheel, we've actually got a 12.3 inch digital dashboard display. And again, you get this on the Saracen and Rhino trims. And it is very familiar to anyone else who's got a new Sangyong product because it is a lovely clear display. The dials are easy to read when you're on the move. And actually you're not bombarded with information. And then going through the little switch here on the steering wheel, you can actually go through a various versions of menus and that. We can even get the sat nav appearing on the screen and it does take up a massive chunk of the screen there, but it's not as distracting as I thought it would be. So all in all, actually, when it comes to the usability of the Musso, especially when you're on the move, it is actually really nice and easy and yeah, very simple to use when driving. So that's something you definitely want in this type of vehicle. But all in all, sat in front of the Musso, it's a very comfortable, spacious place to be. And as I said, it is actually surprisingly well equipped. And I think that's enough of looking at the front of the Musso. Let's see what it's like in those back seats. Sat in the back of the Musso, it's actually very comfortable and very spacious back here. I don't think six footers will have much to complain about. Now that driver's seat is set to my driving position. I'm five foot seven tall and five foot seven wide. And as you can see, I've got a good amount of knee room and headroom is really good as well. So as I said, a couple of six footers could definitely sit back here, but definitely not three adults, I would say, because well, if they're as broad as me in the shoulder area, there will be a bit of a tight squeeze. Now you could get three kids in the back of the Musso and the outer seats have got Isofix supports. Now there's no covers on them, so it's actually just exposed bars so it makes it easy to affix a child seat. Now cubby spaces are actually really good back here as well. We've got so again some very decent sized door pockets. We can get a medium sized bottle of drink in there. Again they're not lined with any fabric. We've got our aeroplane style pockets on the backs of the front seats and then we've also got an extra armrest with a couple of additional cup holders in there which is really handy. Now, when it comes to features, okay, I'll be honest, it is a little bit lacking back here. So firstly, we have got heated outer seats, which is actually really nice to find on a pickup truck, but that's about it. Now, we have got a couple of vents there, so you can get warm or cold in the back of the Musso, but we've got no charging sockets here on the back of the center console or anything like in the doors that you might find on a lot of modern Korean products. 
But when it comes to things such as visibility and light, yes, we have got tinted windows here in the back of the Musso, and they are actually really tinted. That's actually a very decent job there. But even though on a bright day, it does allow a good bit of light in, and you can open the windows all the way down. So that is a bonus. But all in all, I mean, it's a very comfortable place to be, and I actually really like it here in the back of the Musso. I could definitely do a long journey and come out the other end feeling, yeah, pretty happy and relaxed. But I think that's enough of sitting in the back of the Musso. Let's see what it's like in the load area out back. Now, just like a lot of other pickup trucks, you can tailor the Musso to your business requirements and needs, and there's a huge amount of customization available. Now, if you wanna know what's fitted to this particular car, I will put them down in the comment section below with their prices at the time of filming. Now, just like any other pickup, we have got a tailgate, and when I get it open, firstly, we find it's not damped, which is a little bit disappointing, but we have got just over a thousand liters of space, and the dimensions are coming up here on the bottom of the screen. But the good news is, is that you can get a Euro pallet in the back of the Musso and you can get over 1100 kilograms of payload in the back as well. Now the Musso's party trick is that you can actually carry a ton of payload and tow three and a half tons at the same time, which is hugely impressive. What's even more impressive as well is this isn't the biggest Musso you can go for. If you go for the top of the range Rhino, that actually gets classed as a long wheelbase version, so you actually get more space in the back of the Musso, which is really handy if that's what you need for your business. But yeah, it's just a hugely capable pickup truck with the Musso, and it is very competitive in this segment. But I will put more details about the Musso and what it can do in the description below. But do you know what? I think it's now time that we close this up and we take it for a drive. But before we do, I will mention that we have got a reversing camera high up here on the tail lift, which I really do like, or the tailgate, I should say. And what I love as well is the clarity it gives you when you're reversing. And because it's high up, it does mean as well, driving around in damp and horrible conditions, that it doesn't get kicked up with any mud or wetness or anything like that covering the camera. So I really do love that as well. But anyway, let's go for a drive. So once you start driving in the Musso, first impressions are actually really positive. It's very comfortable, it's surprisingly refined, and you do get this kind of sense that this is meant to be a workhorse. This is not a pickup you're gonna have as kind of a lifestyle vehicle, even though it has got all the mod cons to do so. Now, of course, this being a pickup truck, I've got a nice high seating position, so I've got a wonderful view of the road ahead, and I actually do in this weather. It's actually a bit misty out today. Now, the A-pillars are quite thick and chunky, but surprisingly, I've not found myself looking around them at any junctions. The wing mirrors are of a huge size, and they do help with your blind spot monitoring, and I have actually got blind spot detection as well. And then if I look over my shoulder, you can see there's a little bit of a C pillar there, but it's not too thick. And then rear visibility is really good as well. As I mentioned earlier, there's a high set reversing camera on the tailgate, and it actually is a really lovely clarity of the image. I really do like it, and it does help when it comes to parking. So yeah, once you get driving in the Sangyong Musso, first impressions are very positive, and you do get this feeling that this is a proper pickup. It's a proper workhorse for you. Now there are four trim levels to choose from in the Musso range. We've got the entry level EX, the Rebel, the Saracen, which is what I've got here, and the top of the range Rhino. And believe it or not, Musso actually means Rhino in Korean. So the top of the range version is the Rhino Rhino. Yes, it really is. Now, there's a couple of things I will point out in regards to the Musso lineup. So the first three trim levels are all classed as a short wheelbase version of the pickup, but you can still get a Euro pallet in the load area at back. However, if you go for the Rhino, you do get a long wheelbase version. So if you really do need that extra bit of uh, load capacity and space at the back, that would be the one to go for. If, however, you don't, well, the Saracen, I think, is the one to go for. You get everything you need in terms of standard equipment. And the only thing I would say is that it is lacking in some safety features, especially when compared to rivals but I've not really had any issues with it whilst I've been driving the Saracen this week, and I've not felt that I've kind of needed some of those you know, extra safety aspects, but I will point out that it is missing some compared to rivals. 
So yeah, that would be my choice. Go for the Saracen, get all the lovely mod cons and comfort features, as well as some of the safety tech as well, and just enjoy all that capability at the same time. Now, when it comes to powering your Muso, it's nice and simple because there's one engine available. It's a 2.2 litre turbo diesel producing 202 brake horsepower, but more impressively, 441 newton meters of torque. Now, in regards to 0 to 60 times, okay, it's a smidge under 12 seconds to 60, but that's not the reason you're gonna be buying a pickup truck. It's because of what it can do in terms of being a workhorse. And as I mentioned earlier, this is the one pickup that can carry a ton in the load bay and tow three and a half tons at the same time, which is really impressive. Now, if you go for the entry level Muso, the EX, then it does come with a six speed manual, but the other trim levels will come with a six speed automatic. And for the most part, it's absolutely fine. It's nice and smooth going through the gears. What I have found is that you can easily trick it if you kind of hesitate with the accelerator pedal. And then on a couple of occasions, I have kind of wanted to put my foot down, but it's just, it gets a little bit hesitant in its response. It's not a terrible thing, but you know, compared to a car, for example, yes, it will feel quite slow. But in terms of, well, again, being a workhorse, you should have no issues with it. Now you can actually put it into manual mode and there's this little rocker switch there where you can actually adjust the gearing manually. And what I like as well, is that you can kind of feel a bit like a fighter pilot because you can change the gearing just using your thumb, which is actually pretty cool. Now, when it comes to economy, now Sangyong say I should get around 31 and a half miles per gallon on a combined cycle, and that's a WLTP cycle as well. And I do believe them because I have been getting around 29 and 30 MPG whilst driving around in the Muso. Of course, this is unladen. There's nothing in the back and I'm not towing anything. So of course, expect those numbers to drop if you are. But I actually think that's actually not too bad for this type of vehicle. I mean, yeah, it's, in terms of all round performance from the engine, it is actually pretty good. And it allows you to have those towing and carrying capabilities, as I mentioned earlier. So what's the Musso's ride and refinement like? Well, surprisingly, considering the cost, it's pretty blooming good. Now, ride-wise, it does feel like a pickup truck, even though Sangyong say it has an SUV feel to it. Now, in terms of comparing it to an SUV, I would just go straight ahead and compare it to a Rexton because, well, they're the same car underneath or same, you know, platform. So that would be the one SUV I would look to compare it to, but that is much more refined than the Musso. So you do get that little bit of shake going through the cabin because you've got no weight over the rear end, but it's not uncomfortable. These seats are really comfortable and they do take a massive sting out of the bumps and imperfections on the road. Now we've not got proper off-road tires on this Musso. They are kind of a 50-50 or more of a 70-30 kind of feel to them. But do you know what? I can't hear any tire noise. That's actually really impressive. And also they deal with the bumps and imperfections really well. So it's not an uncomfortable pickup truck to drive. And actually means you could do a long journey in the Muso and come out the other end feeling nice and relaxed. And I was pleasantly surprised by that. And here's the other thing as well. Now we're going on to the refinement side. It's surprisingly refined. For the price, for the fact that you've got a massive diesel lump under the bonnet, once the engine settles, and that's the key thing here, you can barely hear it. This is a really refined pickup, and I am truly surprised by that. I was expecting it to have a real agricultural feel to it, but it doesn't. So that's something I really do like about it. And again, it adds to that kind of comfort of knowing that you could do a long journey in the Musso and come out the other end feeling nice and relaxed and not feeling like you've been in a harsh kind of cacophony of noise. So I am really impressed by that. So yeah, for a pickup truck that starts at just over 24 and a half thousand pound, surprisingly comfortable and surprisingly refined as well. I am impressed. So what's the Musso's handling like? Well, just like the ride and refinement, I'm actually pretty impressed by it. It does everything you'll want it to do. 
Now, it's not handling like an SUV, and that's something that Sangyong will say, is that it feels like an SUV to drive. It doesn't, it feels like a pickup. So with the comes to the steering, firstly, the steering wheel feels nice in my hand, and I kind of know what the front wheels are doing when I'm on the road. Now, there's a little bit of over assistance with the steering, so it is quite light, but there's a little bit of weight there, so it does mean that I'm not kind of chucking something lightweight around on the roads otherwise it would feel like a video game and that's not what you want in a pickup but yeah in terms of everyday driving it's got enough weight in it so it feels like you are moving the Musa about but it's light enough that it's a doddle to park so for day-to-day -day tasks you'll have no issues with the Musa whatsoever in terms of an all-round package and driving pickup I am actually really impressed by it. It does everything you want it to do. Now, one thing I will mention about the Musso is its off-roading capabilities. They are lacking against some of its rivals. Now, of course, you can put it into a four-wheel drive high and low ratio gearbox setting, but against a couple of its rivals, when it comes to things like the approach angle or the departure angle, Yes, the Musso is lacking and you have got the risk of catching it on some quite steep inclines. So that is something to be aware of. But if you're just going to do a bit of a muddy field to drive on, you'll have no issues whatsoever. But if you are looking to do a little bit of hardcore off-roading in your pickup, the Musso is not the one to go for. So just be aware of that. So what have been some of the highlights and some of the low points I've experienced living with the Musso this week? Well, high points have definitely been the comfort levels. I actually am really impressed by it. And going with the way that it drives, it means it's a really nice pickup to drive on a day-to-day -day basis. You could use this as a little daily drive. It's gonna get myself oh, a little bit of cross road in here. <laughs> Let that truck pass. And then comes the capability, the fact that you can carry a ton and tow three and a half tons at the same time, I think is hugely impressive. Again, for the price, that's a lot of capability for the money. Now, it's not perfect. As I mentioned, yes, it is lacking in some of the safety features you would get in some of its newer rivals, but I've not really missed them. So that's one thing I will mention. It's just the kind of yes i know i haven't got things like lane departure warning and that but you know what in this day and age that's kind of a blessing because a lot of these lane departure warning systems are a bit oversensitive. and then we've got a couple of little little niggles that i have come across now the first one is you there's not much kind of movement in the seats in the back you can get the the back down and make it nice and flat and you've got access then to your tire puncture repair kit but you can't lift the seats up because they are heated and you don't want to get the wires and that snagged on anything so there's a little bit of usability there that's been taken away but having that nice feature and then the next thing i will mention and i mentioned it earlier in regards to the infotainment system now it's not the infotainment system itself it's actually when you're driving at night the reflection from the infotainment system on the rear screen going into the mirror it can actually be quite distracting and on a couple of nights when i've been driving home from work I've kind of looked, I know, I've kind of looked in the rear view mirror and I thought there was a car behind me, but it wasn't. It was just what the reflection was on the screen. And it just happened to be whatever was on the screen looked like two little dots that could be uh, mistaken for headlights. So that's something I would love to see Sangyong just look at for the next generation of Muso, just being able to get that little niggle out of the way there. And the other thing I have found as well, and I only experienced this, in a tight car park with a couple of passengers is that they actually the back rear doors have got a protruding side to them so if you're in a narrow car park they do kind of poke out a little bit so again just be aware of that but other than that no i've got no issues with the sangyong whatsoever i think this is a brilliant all-round pickup and i think on that note we should jump straight onto the conclusion so then, what are my thoughts on the Sangyong Musso pickup truck in Saracen trim? 
I'm hugely impressed by it. And in terms of value for money, you get an awful lot of metal for your money. And you also get a lot of capability as well. As I know I've mentioned it before, but the fact that you can carry a ton and tow three and a half tons at the same time is hugely impressive. The fact as well that you get a lot of mod cons in terms of creature comforts that you would get in a normal car, like heated and ventilated seats. And again, this isn't the top of the range trim level. This is actually one below. It's actually really impressive. I love the digital dash. It's lovely and clear, easy to use, easy to read. The infotainment system is actually pretty decent. All round comfort and space is hugely impressive as well. And in a, what is now a highly competitive segment, because you've only got around five manufacturers producing diesel pickup trucks, because I'm excluding anyone who's looking to bring a, uh, an electric pickup truck to the UK, it's now hugely competitive. And with a number of manufacturers producing a pickup, which can be used as more of a lifestyle vehicle, you kind of forget that pickups are workhorses. And I think the two companies that you kind of drive them and think, you know what, this is a proper workhorse, I think is Sangyong, and I'd probably say Isuzu. Although I've not driven the new Hilux yet, so I would love to have a little go at that and see what it's like. But having driven the Isuzu and the Sangyong, they've both got this just workaday feel about them. But yeah, with the Muso in particular, the fact they got all this capability for the price, you can't go wrong. Take away any bad snobbery and you can't go wrong. And add to that a seven year, 150,000 mile warranty. You really can't go wrong. Yeah, massively impressed. So everyone, I hope you've enjoyed my review of the new Sang Yong Maso pickup. Of course, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notifications icon to let you know when I, Dave the Auto Bear, bring out a new video. If you've got any questions about the Musso, please put them down in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe as well and follow on social media. But guys, I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Look after yourselves and I hope you're having better weather than what I'm having with this Musso because it is just very misty out there. But everyone, have a great day and I'll catch you all in the next video. So take care, everybody, and bye-bye.